What's going on? Sorry, what's going on? Berkeley Moses here. Um, lucky to have former Lakehead great Isaiah Trailer on with us. Isaiah, thank you for joining. For sure, for sure, man. Appreciate you having. Solid as a b ball. Um, Isaiah, if you could maybe introduce yourself and um, kind of kind of tell people a little bit about you and your story. Uh, my name is Isaiah Trailer. I'm from Tupelo, Mississippi. Um, I started off, I went JUCO, I went to Tupelo High School. I ended up going JUCO to East Central Community College and uh, JUCO in Mississippi. Uh, I did pretty good my first year after that. Um, I went, I signed with Arkansas State University. I went to a couple of showcases, picked up a lot of offers, Division One offers. I ended up signing with, actually no one knows, I signed with uh, Middle Tennessee State, Burberry committed. Yeah. Uh, stuff went on, stuff went on, so I decommitted there. Ended up going to Arkansas State. Arkansas State coach ended up getting fired that summer, so I decommitted from there, which led landed me at Stephen F. Austin University. A lot of people know I went there, and uh, after that, some stuff didn't go my way, so I ended up transferring. I had a long route; it might be yeah. long. Yeah, I, went there. I ended up going to North Alabama University. They were going to transfer, uh, go over to Division One the next year. When you transfer to the NCAA, you have to uh, sit out a year, so I had to sit out. Okay. After that, the coach got fired there again. Bad wow. luck. So uh, after that, I couldn't. I wanted to play Division One because I set out. So, but the the rules are: yeah, any time you transfer, you have to sit out a year. So after that, I would have to sit out, so, or I can go NAI. That was it. And uh, I happened to know this guy named Kevin the Hero from Canada. He was at North Alabama playing the year that I was redshirting, and he introduced me with Coach Ryan Thompson and Coach Matthew Erdman, and that's how I um, got to look at. Okay, so one, once once Kevin kind of connected the dots, did you come up to visit Canada at all, or have you had have you heard anything or been to Canada before that? Man, I was so blind to the fact about a lot of a lot of opportunities in Canada. I really didn't know anything about college basketball or really anything like that before uh, Kevin introduced me to it. Uh, but I, I did take a visit. I took a visit in like uh, late May or June, somewhere around that time. I came down and I, I really liked it, man. It was People that are amazing. It's way different to hear. You know, good, good, good people for sure. Yeah. On that topic, one thing I wanted to ask you, having been um, spent some time on both sides of the border, um, what's one thing that you think Americans don't know about Canadians, and then one thing you think Canadians don't know about Americans? When it comes to uh, sports, anything in general, anything you can think of, the way the people are, the culture. Like, what's uh, one thing you came to Canada? You're like, I, I just didn't even think it was like that. Uh, honestly, man, the, the, the where, I'm, where I'm from, where I'm from in the States, uh, or really anywhere here for, for us is like, people aren't that nice, you know, like, of, of people like, you know, here, if I'm walking somewhere, I look at someone too long, it's like, hey, what you looking at, bro? Like, it's always like a little issue of, you don't speak to people and you just go up mind your business there man it was it was an it was a whole new life for me like i experienced so much more when come to when it come to actually just enjoying myself and not thinking about certain stuff and people yeah. and, you no know, it's actually one thing about canada i learned it was like man it's cool it, it's going to be you know you no know, situations everywhere you go but for sure you know, a whole it was a it was a nice place bro it was like nice people man good feel yeah. What's one stereotype that you ha saw like Canadians had about Americans that you kind of thought, you know what, like I'm not really, I don't think we're not that bad kind of thing. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. what's one stereotype that you see that Canadians had about you guys? Honestly, everybody, everybody thought about me when I went there. Uh, everyone thought like I had a, I was like a, uh, like a bad attitude type guy. Like okay. I was like. You know, like he he's cocky at this room. That's that's a big stereotype that people have about America. Like Yeah. They're like they're cocky, they think they're this, they think they're that. But honestly, man, it's just you gotta just get to know people. Like I I'm just not the type of person to just open up to everyone when I meet them. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like Canadians just like, hey man, what's up? You know, I'm like, hey, what's good? But I'm not just opening up because where I'm from is used to like you you open up too much, you get hurt, you know what I'm saying? For sure. So then I, I learned to get better with that, and I learned the different ways I, how I can be better to um, interact with people. So it actually helped me a lot coming to Canada. But that's the main thing is uh, the, the, the perspective of how we act with people, you know. For real. It's good to hear. Um, on the basketball side, what's one thing that kind of maybe caught you off guard or you didn't expect when you came up here with the, with the OUA? Honestly, man, I, 
I actually thought it was it was gonna be a, a cakewalk. Honestly, I don't think I thought it was gonna be like easy. It, it was gonna be yeah. like super easy. But man, I'll tell anybody from here that don't know much about uh, uh, the OUA or U Sports in general is like it's talented, man. Like, and, and and one of the main things I I would say anytime anyone asks me about it is very coach is well coached. Um, yeah. Very disciplined. Uh, a lot of times, a lot of times, players here, people that I know, they're very you. They'll you find skilled players here, but fundamentals and just being disciplined and knowing where to be in the right spaces and know how to move when the ball is moving, that's something that I think the OUA and players in OUA in Canada are actually great at. Yeah, so, uh, that's one thing that caught me off guard. Like, man, it's not a lot of one on one, but it's a lot of hit, hit, move, screen, hit, hit, move, and like, and that's the way people like to see basketball, you know. So that's one thing that caught me off guard was a lot of good basketball. Yeah, like the brand of basketball, you feel it's a little different than, than what you were used to. Do you find that um, the athleticism was a little better uh, down there before you came up here? Like, as far as the athletic, the, the, the raw athleticism goes? Uh, honestly, it's, it's going to be talented guys everywhere. Like, uh, I can mention a few guys. Uh, Kajre Gray, super yeah. talented. Ali So, super talented. Uh, uh, there's a lot, like uh, Jordan Henry. There's, there's a lot Jordan of people. Henry. Coco, uh, yeah, like it, a lot of guys, you, you find those, but like when I play where, I, where I'm playing at, it's really just a lot of guys like that. It's a lot of guys like me. It's a lot of guys like they're just okay. you know, they're skilled or just you know what I'm saying. But it, it's it, it's certain things that yeah, it, it, it wasn't just too many of that, but it was so many guys that knew how to just play play their role, and that's a great thing when it comes to winning championship. So yeah. that's what I said something. One thing I noticed, like, even growing up, um, we'd be up here if you, like, you take the Final Four, right? Like, you have, like, obviously they got way more money and everything down there, but it's, like, everyone will know that Duke or Kentucky or North Carolina, like, everyone kind of knows even who's in the Elite Eight, you know what I mean? Who made it to the yeah. season? But it's, like, you find it up here that people won't even know that Western made it to the OUA Finals, you know what I mean? It's not common discussion um is there anything you think the oua needs to do differently from a marketing standpoint to kind of spread the word to make it more more known and more more popular amongst locals uh honestly honestly i i just think that's that comes with time man i i don't i don't believe it's because it's actually very talented it's a talented league like it's actually a good league i think it's ran pretty well uh it's just the fact of I think it's just people need to take notice. It's just a thing yeah. you have to just grind it out and everyone take notice. And some I guess it's just getting certain people over here, certain coaches to or uh, just broadcast. And I think it'll be big to get the OUA broadcast it other than just on uh, you know on sites and stuff to yeah. find a site so where people can watch it in America. Uh, get you know you know something like that, but know more about it. For sure. Do you think the um, the league is competitive enough, or do you think it's kind of too tilted towards Carlton, or did you find that the competition was balanced? Uh, honestly, man, I can talk about this forever, man. I, I when I when I first came, all I heard was Carlton, Carlton, yeah. Carlton. Uh, like coming from from me, like I, I'm the type of guy I love to, to be the guy that's like, oh, you think you're better than me, or you think yeah. you this, but. I won't just say me. I, my teammates, some of my teammates, or the new people that came to Lakehead, we changed the identity for the whole team. For sure. And I first got there, bro. Before the season even started, the first thing they're telling me, bro, Carlton. Like, everyone was scared. Like, these yeah. are guys that were there before, too, though. It was like, everyone was like, man, Carlton and the Carlton this, or, yeah. uh, or even Cadre this. Or like, I'm like, yeah. bro, I, I was like, yo, we're not doing none of that, bro. Like, this, this, we, we're going to change our mindset. Like, you're a man just like he's a man, you know? Yeah. And, and you can see the, the 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 change within the team. I wish I would have had more time there, man. I, I really wish I could have came to OGA way earlier than I did. But you can see the change from when we played them the second year when we actually all start realizing we can beat these guys. We, we were yeah. down by one and a half. When we lost by 10, I had four fouls. But it's like, I think it's the fact it's a mindset to think. Carson, actually, they have no fear. Yeah. They, they know we run this, you know what yeah. I'm saying? But it's like if you actually get a group of guys to think that we we can play ball too, and you can change the dynamic of things. But it's the fact of knowing that you can win, you know. Yeah. 
one thing um, I talked to a few of the other guards. One thing they said is that what's tough with Carlton is, is the depth of Carlton. So you'll be you'll be you'll be, you'll play you'll play your thirty minutes, right? But they'll switch like Allen, um, Lloyd, Marcus Anderson. You know what I mean? Moon is too. So they'll have these guys just rotating, and they're coming in fresh. And and you know what I mean? Like these are all talented guys that can start on any team. You know what I mean? But because they're so deep. They, they can spot play those guys in minutes and they, they seem to stay fresh all the time. Yeah, honestly, that, that's huge too. Uh, they're actually extremely deep. And, and it's not even the fact that they can start on any team, but everyone on Carlton knows their role. It's like, no, I don't feel like it's no, I don't know much, but I don't feel like it's much hatred at all among, amongst those guys when it comes yeah. to knowing that I'm here. That's one thing I wish we would have stressed more about my team is I'm here, I'm going to take my goal, I'm going to take three charges a game. If you know, even if you're a scorer, you're, what's your role for this team? You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like, I know you can score, but that's not what we need from you. You're the best defender we got. I need you to lock this guy down every night. We yeah. got somebody to do it. Or, or the fact that just they, they know what they're doing and they're all so confident, man. It, it, that, I think that's a big part of why they win. They're deep, and everyone there knows they can ball. And they yeah. know that they're like the, the, the energy you get from them and the, the mindset they have is completely different than any other team in the, in the league. What was your favorite road game, your favorite road gym to play in? Uh, honestly, I like Carlton. Like, yeah. I actually like Carlton gym every time because it's like uh, – I like Ryerson too. Uh, I really like any gym where where, where I'm, I'm – we're counted out, honestly. We're counted yeah. out in this. And it's supposed to be the top dog and this right here. Even if we didn't come out on top, I love games like that. I love that. Like, that drives me. Yeah, just to, to step up to better competition or whatever the case. What's something that so now that you've graduated and you're you're kind of looking forward to to carve your path out? What are some things that are important to you personally when when choosing your your next career or your next team? What's some things that are important to you as a man? Honestly, man, that, that's that's the reason I signed with uh, CSA Sports Management, and I know uh, Michael Oden and stuff. He played in the uh, UA, but it's just like I, I wanted to make sure I'm with a good guy, man. It's just, yeah, uh, it's not all about the the money. If the first team gonna offer me so and so, and just all the money, it's like, but I really wanna go play in a good league and actually make people take notice of me. Uh, I'm learning every day. I'm getting better every day, physically and mentally, on the game of basketball, studying, and my body, taking care of my body. Uh, so it's honestly, I, I want to, I want to get in the best situation for me possible so I can, uh, get to the next level where I want to get to. What are some things you like to do off the court to, to keep busy or even like, if you got to make money between, between contracts, what are some things that you would look to? Uh, honestly, I do, I do, I train kids, I train kids in sports, or even if it's, uh, this not just basketball, any sports they have, I try to train kids. Uh, I like to read, man. Uh, really spending time with family. Uh, I, I'm the type of guy, I save money, so I always have a little money. At, you know, yeah. I, uh, I'm not a party guy. I don't go out much. So I really have money when I need it. But, yeah, most of the time I'm just chilling, man. I work kids out. I like to help other people. I like to help, help other kids. I like to mentor, tell them ins and out of basketball. A lot of people don't know basketball is really business, especially yeah. when you got high business. Uh, the, bat, the basketball part is the small part. Uh, the waking up at four in the morning, five in the morning to go run, go to yeah. study hall, class, take a one hour nap, come back to practice, do it all over again. I like to tell kids it's not just what you think. I want to go D one. I want to go D one. Yeah. There's so, so many other places to play, like the OUA and other places you can do. You know, but I try to I try to give as much as I can. And I, what I failed at and what I learned from and give it to other people. That's good, man. Yeah, you gotta try and get back to the youth. You know what I mean? And just yeah, that's it's more. It's one of the more rewarding things that you can do too to help others. You know what I mean? And pass on some knowledge that that you got. Um, we talked about the brand of basketball uh, with the OUA. Just to touch on that again, though, do you feel that it's a brand of basketball that can prepare you for a professional career? Uh, definitely, definitely. And and the reason I say that is because. It's already people don't know this where I'm from, but it's all it already has FIBA rules. Yeah. So, and uh, like the NCAA, we used to get timeouts. We we get trapped. I can call the timeout. Get out. Yeah. Of there. Get Thirty seconds. You know, shot clock. Yeah. Shot clock. Uh, it, it's, it's really the rules. The rules already kind of set you up for what you're going to be playing for if you want to play professionally. Because yeah. if it's a guy just coming from 
excuse me, the state and going to play professionally, you don't know if I get I – don't, I can't call the time out on the court or get a live ball, you know, yeah. or, or the stock clock is uh, shorter or just yeah. small things like that, you know. So yeah, that, that's huge. I think OUA is on the right track, man. Uh, then it's well coached, super well, very well coached, and uh, it teaches you a lot of things about yourself. When you when you graduated from Lakehead, um, did you feel okay? Like I've graduated because obviously COVID put a wrench in, in everything, right? But did you feel when you graduated like I'm ready for my next career? I'm ready, whatever that may be. I'm ready academically and athletically. Did you feel uh, preparation from from being up here? For sure, man. Especially like I, like I explained uh, when I first got on here, I've been to a lot of places. Uh, I met a lot of people. Um, I had a lot of ups and downs. So yeah. I really don't feel like I really feel like I'm ready for I'm ready for anything. Now I won't say that things won't happen to me. I, I will still won't meet failure, meet adversity, but I, I feel like I'm ready to conquer anything right now. Uh I, I work hard. That, that that's what it takes. Knowing that you can meet something that's gonna knock you back, you know, and not not being too cocky, being humble and on that, giving all praise to God, you know, uh so that's just my mindset. I feel like anything that comes my way, I'm ready to I'm ready to face it head on. Yeah. The, what we're trying to do here is is definitely build our, our brand of Canada basketball. And obviously like you're you're like a cousin, a close friend of Canada basketball. You know what I mean? I haven't played up here. And we appreciate the the stuff that you put into the game, you know what I mean? It's right. like having guys like you come up here, it makes it more competitive, it makes it better to cover. And honestly appreciate that, you know what I mean? Um, what we're seeing now, we have a lot of great guys coming out of the OUA, like a couple guys you mentioned, yourself, Kadre, um, JV Mukama, um, obviously Tanner, he left Ryerson, he's going down south, but he's OUA alum as well. Um, what would you think that the former players need to do to, to not even talk to, talk to the guys that are currently playing, but to maybe communicate to the younger kids that this is a good league that, that, that we have going on here and don't take it for granted? Uh, honestly, honestly, I really think it's, it's about actually talking to a kid personally, like, uh, cause honestly coming out of high school, me, everyone I know, I want to go D1. Yeah. Uh, Even here. Yeah. Because of facilities, because of, uh, the exposure you get, because yeah. of the, the, the year you get, um, yeah, the, the college experience period is just, we, 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 we really want that. We think we want that. We really don't know, understand that it's not what's best for you. you need to go for what's best for you you know not what everyone else is doing so when i talk to anybody man i try to throw that out there to them the oh you are canada basketball kids from here because i was like man every d1 is great you yeah. find a good you find a good spot it's a great spot but the OUA is so slept on uh when i when I um when I talk to you here or anything, I let them know, man, this is a great opportunity. If you ever get any coach or anything to reach out to you, send your, send your fam to them. Uh, yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's actually a great league. I think I really think that we should – what people like that me and myself and other guys is done should tell them. I'm pretty sure they do, though. Uh, it's a great league, man. Don't don't look over it. Definitely don't yeah. look over it. You got to, I'm going to find you wherever you at if you have to tell them. For sure. I think what, what could be tough sometimes, though, is like obviously with the NCAA – you see the good guys going to NBA, Europe, whatever, whatever, right? But a lot of guys, once they graduate from U Sports, unless you know them personally, you don't really hear about them after that. It seems like they kind of fall off. But yeah, there's some guys that are in Europe, they're making bank over there, you know? Right. So like, do you think it's a case where we need to like, give those guys more exposure to what they're doing and maybe have like a database of, of former OUA players that are playing professionally now or something like that. Like any, any ideas like that that you think could maybe kind of spread the word? And uh, Yeah, honestly, I feel like what you're doing is huge, man. Talking to guys that actually can, can uh, put their experience out there. Uh, I think that's huge. And for people like me to share it, share what you're doing to people yeah. that I know. And uh, I think it's one of those things, Channing Reaction, you, it just keeps going. Uh, and especially guys is making money overseas from U Sports. Uh, I heard about a lot of people, honestly. Uh, and that's what that, that those are guys that U Sports need to praise or yeah. you know, just praise because those are guys that are actually going to get you the exposure to let people know that this is a league that is, is, is not a joke, you know? 
So yeah. uh, that, that's huge what you said. The guys that's making bank over there that came through here, they need to support the OUA, just like the OUA needs to support those guys. So it's, it's just a thing. I think that it, it would get better, just the fact of everyone coming to a common ground and knowing how to do it. Do you feel the training facilities and things were adequate down here when you were for your experience? Uh, that that's one thing. I feel like some schools, like obviously Carlton, Rice, and uh, places like that have Toronto have nice facilities. Lakehead, Lakehead was that was one thing that they. Uh, I think that Lakehead needs to. That comes with money too, but needs yeah. to put more money into the facilities, man. And they're actually, sure. good. they're getting a new one right now. So oh nice. Yeah, it's gonna be super nice. Uh, and that's the thing when you're a young kid, you're gonna look at that. You yeah, you don't want to go in a locker room that's wood or, or yeah, like yeah. Old down, you know. So that's one thing that that I think most schools, some, there's a lot of schools. Oh, you honestly, it needs to fix. Like they they should fix the facilities to, to catch the kids' eyes and stuff. Because you have to be honest, that's what kids look at. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, like you're saying before, like a lot of the kids, they look at the D1 for the, the nice uniforms and nice facilities. And that's the stuff that kind of catches your eye early as a youngster. You know what I mean? But and then I guess you end up staying for the substance, though. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, yeah. But I'm glad, like, overall, you know what I mean, that we could have I went to school at Windsor and we'd have some guys from Detroit come over and um, they're on the team and stuff like that. But it's good to see someone from, from way down south, you know what I mean, find their way in the league. Um, you see a lot of international guys too, guys from France. Like we mentioned Tanner, he's international as well. So it, it's definitely a good thing. Um, as far as yourself, um, I guess right now you're just continuing the training and then we're looking for, for your next steps. Yeah, right now, man, I'm just training. Uh... I'm really – what I'm trying to do now is just really take care of my body because now this is really my lifestyle. You know, like I have to – my body is what's going to make me money, you know, so take yeah. care of my family. I'm, I'm praying, praying to happen. So I'm just taking care of my body, man, training, spending time with my family as much as I can, uh, chilling, staying on the low because uh, this COVID stuff is real. So yeah, uh, I'm just trying to stay safe and be ready for when the time comes. That's all you can do is be ready for when the time comes. For sure. Try to end on a positive note. Um, obviously, a lot of turmoil in, in 2020 with everything that's going on. Um, what, what's one thing that has been positive for you, whether it's getting to spend more time with your family, a new mindset, more time training on, 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 on the one by yourself, or what's something that you've taken away positive from this COVID situation or just from every, any situation from 2020? Oh, man. As you said, 2020 has been a hectic year, man. It's something that I think I don't think anyone will forget. Uh, so I think really this is the time for people to find themselves, man. If you if yeah. you haven't really gotten in tune with yourself during this time, it's like, or or found a way to 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 you know get yourself get yourself right. You know what I'm saying? Get yourself right. Uh, it's really you wasting your time. So with this time, man, I just really been focusing on myself and my family and just mental health. Mental health is yeah, real, man. For sure. <laughs> Because a lot of people are sitting in these times and now think, what am I going to do now? Especially in a profession like mine of basketball, with everything shutting down, you can't even fly overseas right now. You can't do anything. You don't. Yeah. You really don't know when things going to open back up. Yeah. So I uh, really have to become one with yourself and actually be happy of where you at now, and not where you yeah. think you're. So I rest what I what I've really been doing is just trying to be a better person, not not just a basketball player. Just be a better person, man. That's good, man. Just a message of contention. You know what I mean? Just being content with, with where you're at while still trying to get better and improve. Yeah, for sure. All right, man. Thanks, man. Thanks for coming on. We appreciate your time. Uh, I'm just going to gonna cut the feed here. And again, man, thanks for coming on. We appreciate you. I right, appreciate you, man. All right.